So you have a talk that explores the relationship between agile development and software architecture. Mm -hmm. What's the state of that relationship? Are they getting along? Where's it going? So I think the relationship is, it's evolving. So agile as a, as a methodology, a lot of the practices that came out of it kind of focused on teams at first. And I think what's really happened with that relationship is it's pushing that boundary outside of the teams, pushing the boundaries of things that the people and parts of organizations that teams interact with. And, and it, that's really where the relationship is. I think it's maturing as some of the tools for pieces of the organization outside of software development teams, some of those tools are getting better. For example, with DevOps tools mm -hmm. or infrastructure, um, being able to automate more of those things, it's pushing those boundaries to be more flexible mm -hmm. outside of just a software development team, pushing it to the business to be more flexible, to be experimenting and changing faster. So is Agile kind of agitating and changing things? Is that? I think it's become more more of a normal. Mm -hmm. So having that constant feedback, doing things faster and being more flexible in, in how you're doing, how practices are implemented, principles are in, implemented. Mm -hmm. um, I think Agile as a methodology has kind of started to get people to think, well, Am, is what I'm doing, is that the right way to do things or should we reevaluate certain things? And that started within teams. And as, as that's gotten more normal, mm -hmm. people have started trying to question some of the things that are outside of teams. I see. It's harder to change, it's easy, it was maybe easier to change things within a team. Maybe it was a little bit easier at first and now those boundaries, you know, trying to, now that there's been some success within teams, trying to move that success and make it a, a full value stream, agile process. Sure, okay. Um, is there a perception that architecture somehow doesn't apply to agile? And if so, where does that come from? I, I think that perception definitely exists. Mm. I've heard agile being called the Wild West and, and very cowboyish, and I'm not exactly sure where it comes from. I think some of it is um, maybe some of the, the principles or the, the how they've been uh, executed in different places. For example, um, in the Agile Manifesto it says working software over documentation. Maybe that interpretation is all working software, no documentation. <laughs> and so, and, and it's, that would be one interpretation. Right? And yeah. it's, that's not really what it was meant to be. It was, we want more working software. Don't focus on the documentation first, but it's still necessary. So architecture is about having a plan and, and making sure you see a high level, high level picture. So some of the agile, agile principles is, is doing things faster and changing and, and um, getting feedback and, and then changing based on that feedback. And so, how does that work with your plan that you already have? Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the perception of agile architecture doesn't fit in with agile comes back to, well, architecture is this plan, the static thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more, I think it's more about figuring out how you can still do architecture, but being more agile about it. Okay, I see. Um, what are the two or three most important things a software architect, architect can do to thrive in an agile environment? Sounds like flexibility might be a key one. Flexibility, I think, um, in addition to that, I think establishing trust. I, I think there has been a lack of, a lack of trust of being a, of agile teams uh, making decisions you know, without any understanding of where it's going, uh, making sure that architects trust the teams, but also uh, can communicate the vision, like the overall vision. That's really important, so that so that they can have that trust and on. So communicating the vision can help teams understand where they're going, and then trusting the teams to do the right thing is important. So teams feel like they have some autonomy. Um, I think a third one that I would say is being engaged. Um, you have to you have to still be engaged so you can kind of see if 
if something isn't going according to a plan or if we need to change the plan, um, you need to see what teams are learning, what things are changing as the software development is actually happening. So you don't just give the architecture over. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So, so um, architecture is important, but we need to be able to adjust it as we go along. So, so being engaged with teams at some level, uh, so you can help say, oh, okay, this plan needs to change a little bit in here, and then take it back and kind of evaluate it against the, mm -hmm. the architecture as a whole. So uh, on the flip side of that question, what mistakes should software architects avoid in agile environments? Is it just the inverse of what you were saying, or are there particular things they should really watch out for? Definitely disengagement from teams and, and sitting in, sure. say, an ivory tower situation of not understanding the contextual things, the, the, the things that the teams have learned. Um, that's kind of the inverse of mm -hmm. being engaged. I think um, it's not really the inverse, but uh, not listening also is important. So I think really understanding what context teams are bringing, what's changed, and understanding why the plan needs to change it can come back to making sure you understand the real problems. I think uh, listening to the problems and kind of getting all that context, it's not really the inverse of anything I said, mm -hmm. but just it's a really important skill, and I, I think um, if that isn't if that's not happening, then that can be really detrimental to to understanding where the architecture is going. Um, uh, last question I have for you: What people or projects are you following these days? So I don't follow anything really specifically. But I guess uh, so. I'm from Chicago. I follow a lot of Chicago local Chicago things. Things like uh, 1871 is a, a startup event. Uh, startup community working space. Um, there's a lot of really cool things happening in Chicago that are definitely community working space. One of the things uh, I'm working, I'm helping with is uh, a, a company called Shift Women. Um, and that kind of leads me to the other thing I follow, uh, not people or project specific, but um, women in tech. I follow a lot of people that are trying to change the face of technology and uh, what they're doing about it and different things that are that's working and not working and things like that. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Thanks.